Welcome to our China Stories, a series which explores Chinese culture through the eyes of five China experts. They have dedicated their lives to the learning of Chinese history and culture. There's so much in Chinese history that ordinary people in in the West can be interested in and fascinated by, make comparisons and so on. And have formed a connection with the country through their different disciplines. I wanted to go and make a series of films that revealed the, the real soul of China. In a world where cultural barriers and limited knowledge of China continue to exist. We'll have huge opportunities, I think, to do cultural exchanges between China and the UK. They seek to improve the understanding between China and the West. You realise, actually, there are many more similarities than there are differences. The problem is it's always the differences that get accentuated. So I hope that those young people are the, the new generation of translators. Join me for the next five episodes on our China Stories. This time I visited Nikki Harmon, award-winning translator of Chinese contemporary fiction and literary non-fiction. Nikki promotes Chinese literature to English language readers and hopes that her book translations are a window onto Chinese life and society. I first got interested in China when I was about 13 or 14 and I missed a term of school because of an illness and my parents got a tutor to come in. She brought me loads of books about the Silk Road. So I thought this was wonderful, so I was fascinated by China from then on. In those days you couldn't learn Chinese in school, obviously, now you can. Uh, when it got to choosing a university subject, I, I then uh, I had a, an uncle who reckoned that Chinese was the up-and-coming language. He was way ahead of his time. So he encouraged me to study Chinese and I went to Leeds University. And uh, then I left and I did other jobs and I didn't actually start translating for a long, long time after that, at the end of the 1990s, by which time I had forgotten all my Chinese and then had to relearn it all. And then I started, I started after that. As soon as I started translating, I realised this was something I wanted to do. And I think one of the joys of translating is to show me how much variety there is in Chinese life, Chinese literary life, the life of Chinese authors, and Chinese readers, of course. There are so many good writers in China that it's really worth looking at how they craft their novels. Um, and not to treat a novel as a, a piece of reportage about China. When you're translating, you're kind of opening a window. And so every time some reader who doesn't know very much about China uh, reads a book translated by me or by someone else, they're getting a, a look through that window. And so from my point of view, it's a great privilege to be able to push open that window. But as for young readers, I think they'll be spoiled for choice because there are some wonderful writers uh, for children in China. And now there's an increasing number of translations. So Cao Wenxuan, Huang Beijia, uh, and so I've translated two books by Huang Beijia. Young readers, uh, actually there's a lot for them to read in translation from Chinese. And I, th I think they should go for it. I, I think sometimes they will uh, feel that they've learned a lot about China, but mostly I think they'll feel they've learned a lot about people. Nikki translated numerous contemporary works of writer Jia Pinghua, which explore some of the darker aspects of Chinese society, particularly life in the countryside. She says that the translation process of these books had its challenges. People say about uh, Jia Pinghua that he writes a lot in dialects and that that creates a challenge for readers from other parts of China, let alone the translator. I think with Broken Wings, it wasn't so much a problem of understanding and reproducing the dialect. It was much more figuring out how to read this very violent and tragic story that it tells and how to understand that as a reader. I think Jia Pinghua does it by creating the voice of the narrator, Butterfly, Hu Die, um, in a very realistic way. And so she's not always tragic, sometimes she's quite light-hearted, she makes friends with the villagers. Probably the most difficult thing I had to deal with was the violence of what happens to her. You unconsciously step back a bit. I am really into the translation process. 
actually I didn't feel anything. I just translated. It was only when I read it again six months later that I was appalled. So in other words, when you're translating, you kind of put your feelings on the back burner, then you come back to them after, and that's when you feel the full emotional force. Nikki feels it's important for readers to explore a range of different genres within Chinese literature in order to better understand the country. Uh, I think any reader of Chinese literature should aim to range as widely as possible. Not just fiction, but also poetry, and a lot of poetry comes out translated from Chinese every year. Um, young adult literature, as we, I already talked a bit about that. Um, all different kinds of fiction, fiction written by women, fiction written by men, uh, memoirs, there have been some good memoirs like uh, Our Story uh, by Rao Ping Ru. She's actively encouraging school children to take part in Chinese translation and hopes that such opportunities will shape a strong generation of translators. I've been involved in a project uh, through Paper Republic, which is the non-profit, the charity that I, I work with. And we've worked with a university, uh, one of the universities in Oxford, on something called Translation Exchange, which introduces the subject of translation from Chinese to, China, to school children in England, uh, just to get them translating and to see what kind of things they can translate. And we ran a competition last year, and some of the children who are largely uh, middle school, high school age, produced some wonderful work. Um, and they translated poems and stories, and I was very encouraged by that. So I hope that those young people are the the new generation of translators. So I do hope that more people will do it and uh, manage to find other jobs that they can combine it with.